Hello, my name is Clayton Osler. I'm going to show you our Content Protect professional software. I work with Content Watch, and we're going to show you a little bit about this software. It happens to be the world's best content filtering and computer protection software in the world for small businesses and organizations. So what I'm going to show you today is a little bit about policy management. We've already created a, a video that shows you a little bit about this architecture, which I've described earlier. But the key portion to remember is that the management's all done in the cloud. So I'm going to go to our cloud service. And I'll log in and manage my organization. Now my organization has several groups set up over here on the side and my last video described how groups and users work. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to go in and create a policy and explain a little bit about what these policies do. I'm going to edit, I will edit here the customer service policy. So the customer service policy, you'll notice we have several options for administrative or privileges and then I have some portions on filtering. So I'll just kind of give you an overview of the way this works. The allow privileges give users the ability to override the filter or to integrate the way that they log in with the software to their Windows or Active Directory logins. You can do things like request an exception or request that an, an administrator override the, the block if a user gets blocked. So these are administrative privileges. I can also choose to block things such as instant messaging, web and chat IM. I can block things like news groups or peer-to-peer or -peer networking and I can even be as granular as I'd like and block a single IM client if I choose to do so. Right now I'm, I'm granting access to all these types of programs. I can also choose in my policy if I want to send the reporting information from my client up to the cloud for, for viewing. This is for both web traffic and instant messaging. Uh, further down I can do things like control SSL content. One of the great parts of our software that's very unique to the industry is the ability to filter HTTPS and SSL content as well. So the filtering I'm going to show you in just a minute can actually be applied to secure content as well. Some applications such as 64-bit applications that support encryption have found ways to try to circumvent our filtering so you can actually choose to block that off as well. And if you're concerned about your users posting information, blogs, uh, forums, uploading images to the internet, you can actually choose to block those options as well. Over here on the right hand side you'll notice I have a couple options here. I have filter mode where I can choose to filter based on category or I can restrict the filter and run it just based on individual websites. We call this whitelisting or blacklisting. So if I ran in this mode I would provide a list of okay websites, everything else would be potentially blocked. And I could import my own list if I wanted to do so. Uh, but I'm going to jump back to categories. You'll notice here under the categories, for every category I have three options. I can warn, I can allow, or I can block. So allow is obviously going to allow us the ability to con access any content that's categorized as adult mature or alcohol. Uh, further down though I can choose to do things uh, for example under profanity such as mask. So not only can I block in this case I'm going to block pornography but I've also chose to mask profanity which means that let's say I go to a, a website there's a, a profanity word or a, a specific explicit word that I'm trying to block on a website, that word would be rewritten and masked with uh, garbage characters so that it actually shows up as something else on the website, which is a great feature embedded in our software. The warn feature also allows you to tell users that potentially a type of content is found on the website, but it's not actually going to block the users. They can continue on and still continue to view that type of, of content. Uh, down here, once I save these settings, these policies are all contained here under the policy manager and choose a group that I want to apply it to. So these policies can be granular to a single user or a group. Uh, I can choose to set them up on a, at a custom level and, and apply them to, to the entire organization or a default policy that applies to everyone. So this is kind of an overview of the policies. This is the simplified version. I'm going to create a, I will create another video here in, in a few minutes to give you an overview of the advanced features such as time controls, web exceptions, and I'll also create another video to show you a little bit about the reporting for both the web traffic and the IM traffic. So this is Clayton and thanks for watching.